60 days ago I installed a Veritas twin screw vise on my bench and in this video I'm going to do the 60 day review. Let's get started. I did buy this vise used at a pretty good price and I made a video about installing it and reusing these jaw vices that came with it. But as a used item it was missing two parts. One part was this nice little brass knob which allows you to disengage the shear pin. That allows the right screw to operate independent of the left screw, allowing you to skew the jaws slightly. To resync them, you just allow the pin to snap back in place and then now they'll operate together. One great thing about this vice system is that the installation instructions and manual are available from the Veritas website. And while reading the instructions, I realized that I was missing that part there, but I was also realized that I was missing the extra shear pin. The vise comes with this extra shear pin because its job is to break off if you over apply pressure on the screws. That's sort of a protection system against damaging the rest of the system through over tightening. Because I was missing those two parts, I contacted Veritas and they advised me to go through Lee Valley to order these two parts. I contacted Lee Valley to initiate the order and I received a message from them a few days later that they were sending me these parts for free. Wow, that's amazing that Lee Valley sent me those parts for free. I still can't get over it. Whenever a company gives great customer service like that, I like to reward it with giving them my business. So I went ahead and purchased some items that I had been thinking about anyway for a long time. Let me show you those. This is a Veritas PM V11 blade, 2 and 3 8 inch wide. I, I'll be able to use that in this 5.5 from Tay Tools or this modern Stanley 4.5. I'm very interested in this PM V11 material and interested to try it out. I'm hoping it's a big improvement over the base quality blades that come with these types of low end planes. In a future video, I'll be doing a review of this Tay Tools five and a half plane along with this Veritas PM V11 blade and comparing it to this cheap four and a half Stanley plane. The other Lee Valley purchase I made was this high friction matte material. In a future video I'll be comparing it to the excellent material that comes standard on the Shopsmith push blocks. This stuff has proven to be very grippy. And the third item that was in the box was this Veritas honing guide. I've been using this honing guide for some time. This model is supposed to have a wider wheel than these and uh, I'm assuming that's going to make it much more stable. Again, I'll take a look at that in a future video. Because the part is so small and I'll likely lose it in the toolbox, I've decided to make a little storage hole behind this knob. Perfect. Now I just need to remember it's there. One step in the instructions I didn't follow had to do with putting a 7 degree back bevel on the front jaw. The instructions indicated to temporarily affix a thin strip of wood to the front face of the vise and then run this piece through the thickness planer and that would thickness plane a back bevel on this front jaw. The purpose of the back bevel is so that when you close the jaw the natural racking of the system will twist this way a little bit and with the back bevel your top of the jaw will still close first and then the bottom will pinch in later creating a very strong grip. Now I didn't necessarily want to put the seven degree back bevel on the front jaw because both of these jaws are made of mostly MDF clad with veneers of hardwood. It works out just fine, but I didn't necessarily want to send this assembly through the thickness planer. So what I did is I took some ordinary toolbox drawer liner and some double face tape. So I cut out a strip of the drawer material, taped it down with some double stick tape, and that has created a super strong grip. With that drawer liner affixed to the inside of the vise, it just gets a really good grip. So far, I haven't missed having that back bevel, but if it becomes a problem in the future, 
I can always try to add it. The only other step in the instructions that I didn't follow was to add a support block between the back of the screw and the bench. So the suggestion is to put a block like this that just rubs against the screw so that as the device is advanced that way and the weight puts downward pressure here, it'll lift the screw this way. They're suggesting that the wear block will countermand that gravity induced racking by giving the screw something to ride on. So far, I found that I haven't really need that, mainly because I don't open the jaw that wide. But if it becomes a problem, I can always come back and add something later. The Veritas twin screw is attached to a Husky adjustable height workbench. I released a video a few weeks ago explaining how I built this storage cabinet and how it's not only storage, but also it makes this adjustable height bench more stable. It's done a great job for that. It's many more times stable than it used to be, which means I can get a lot more value out of my vise. One thing that's been really nice are these casters. They lock easy, they're very rigid, and they're just as easy to unlock. I suppose one criticism of the Veritas twin screw is the lack of a quick release mechanism, which means to fully open the jaw, you have to manually crank it. And that's true to close it as well. So you can see with the jaw fully open, it has a little bit of a bounce. That's partly due to the material used for the front face. But truthfully, I probably won't use the vise at this extension for myself, but it may bother other people. So I'm counting about 50 rotations to get the jaw to open and then another approximately 50 to get it to close. Honestly, that doesn't really bother me, but I could see where it might bother some people. The Veritas twin screw has more or less been a game changer for my workshop. It's allowed me to do so many things more quickly and easily and just enjoy my time in the wood shop more. I don't have any regrets about buying it and installing it on my bench. Well, that does it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one.